Hello everyone, welcome to the Masters PU College. As it is a first class, let me introduce myself. I am Balaji Rao, working as a mathematics lecturer from past 16 years. I worked in various organizations in Karnataka as well as in Andhra Pradesh. In this class, we are going to learn what are the main branches of mathematics that we are going to learn in this two years course. And we are going to discuss a small topic called number system. In first POC, the first two chapters are sets and relations and functions. In these two chapters, we use number system very frequently. As it is a bridge course, so if we revise the number system quickly, it will be very useful when we do first chapter and second chapter. So without much delay, let's begin the class. In mathematics, mainly we have four branches. First one is algebra, second one is geometry, third one is trigonometry, fourth one is calculus. What is algebra? Algebra deals with numbers, variables with mathematical operations. You know variables. Variable means unknown things. X, Y, Z, A, B, C, like that. Mathematical operations. You know what are mathematical operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, those things. For example, x plus y is an algebraic expression. a plus b whole square, a plus b whole cube. All these things you already learn in SSLC. So, algebra is a topic which deals with numbers, variables and mathematical operations. Second part is geometry. Till now, whatever you did, that is known as solid geometry. You know about circle, you know about sphere, you know what is area of a circle, what is volume of a sphere, all those things you know till now. But in this geometry, we are going to learn about straight lines, circles, parabola, ellipse, hyperbola, all those things we will learn. But what is the main thing we will learn in our syllabus? We will learn how to express a geometrical figure in algebraic form. For example, a straight line is there. We will represent a straight line in algebraic form. We will learn about equation of a straight line. We will learn about equation of a circle. Like that, all those things we are going to learn in geometry. Mainly, what we will learn in geometry, we will learn how we express a geometrical figure in algebraic form. That is what we are going to learn about geometry. Next, trigonometry. This is very, very important branch of mathematics. It is going to be introduced in first PUC. Here, you will learn about trigonometric functions like sin x, cos x, tan x, Six trigonometric functions are there. You are going to learn about these six trigonometric functions and the applications of trigonometry are very, very useful in higher education, especially when you, are, when you go for engineering. These applications are very, very useful in higher education. Next main branch is calculus. In this calculus, you are going to be introduced what is differentiation, what are its applications, what is integration, what are its applications, all those things you are going to learn in our syllabus. So our syllabus is mainly divided into four types. Algebra, Geometry, Trigonometry, Calculus. Okay, so in this two years course, we are going to learn about mainly these four topics. In addition to this, other things also there like Vector Algebra, Three Dimensional Geometry, such type of other things are also there. But these are the main four branches of Mathematics. As I said, we are going to learn about number system in this class. Number system is mainly divided into two types. One is real numbers, another one is complex number. Till now in SSLC, whatever the numbers you did till now, they are all real numbers. However, by the end of this class, you are going to get some clarity about what are real numbers. And second one is complex numbers. These are going to be introduced to you in first POC. In first POC, we have a chapter called complex number. However, I'll discuss little bit about complex numbers. Whatever number you take, that number will be either real number or complex number. Now, we are going to learn about real numbers. It's not about immediately real numbers. We are going to learn about few numbers first that you already know. At the end, I'll discuss what are real numbers. Natural numbers. What are natural numbers? 
counting numbers are known as natural numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All these numbers are natural numbers. Natural numbers are denoted by N, capital N, bold letter N. Here, I written all these numbers in flower brackets uh, to represent a set. Actually, in our first PUC, first chapter is sets. There, I'll explain more clearly about set. But here, I am using this set notation. I kept all these numbers in flower brackets. Now, I am using set notation here. Okay. So, what are natural numbers? All counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are known as natural numbers. Now, next, for these natural numbers, if we add 0, we will get whole numbers. What are whole numbers? 0, 1, 2, 3. You observe, in addition to natural numbers, we are just adding 0. These are all known as whole numbers. Here, I am going to discuss about a relation between natural numbers and whole numbers. We have a definition called subset. In sets chapter, you will learn more clearly about subset. However, uh, here I am going to, to explain the relation between natural numbers and whole numbers. We need to know uh, what is subset. You observe here, all the elements present in this set are present in this set. For example, 1 is present in this set. 1 is present here, yes. 2 is present in this set. 2 is present here, yes. All the elements present in this set are present in this set. Then we say this set is a subset of this set. Try to understand. What I am saying here, if I ask what is the relation between natural numbers and whole numbers, natural numbers are the subset of whole numbers. That means all natural numbers are whole numbers. All natural numbers are whole numbers. Is whole numbers is a subset of natural numbers? Is whole numbers is a subset of natural numbers? When we say whole numbers are subset of natural numbers, all the numbers present in this set are present in this. Then we say whole number set is a subset of natural number set. But you see here, 0 is present in whole number set, but 0 is not in natural numbers. So here, this set whole numbers is not a subset of natural numbers. I hope you are understanding what is subset. All the numbers present in this natural number set are present in whole number set. That's why we say this set is a subset of this set. What I am trying to say here, natural numbers are subset of whole numbers. Okay, now we learn about natural numbers, whole numbers. Now we will see what are integers. These whole numbers are there. Na? You include plus or minus symbol to all these numbers like 0, plus 1, minus 1, plus 2, minus 2, plus 3, minus 3 and so on. These are all known as integers. Integers are denoted by Z or I. In some books they will write I, in some books they will write Z. So what are integers integers are 0 plus r minus 1 plus r minus 2 plus r minus 3 these are all integers is 4 is an integer yes 4 is an integer is 5 is an integer yes minus 100 is an integer yes minus 100 is an integer is 1 by 2 is an integer no 1 by 2 is not an integer and in this we will see another notation also that is z plus z plus in the power, we will write plus. Z plus indicates set of all positive integers. Whenever we write Z plus, it means plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, like that. Whenever we write Z minus, it indicates set of all negative integers. Negative integers means minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, like that. What do you know about 0? 0 is positive or negative? 0 is neither positive nor negative. So what we learn? We learn about natural numbers. We learn about whole numbers. We learn about integers. Now we will see what is the relation between natural number, whole number, integers. You see here, all the numbers present in natural numbers are present in integers. Yes, you see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. Whatever the numbers present in natural numbers, all the numbers present in integers. It tells you that this set, natural number set, is a subset of integers. See here, natural number set is a subset of integer. It means all the elements present in natural numbers are present in integers. Now you see relation between whole numbers and integers. Whatever the numbers present in this set are present in integers. You see here 0, yes, 0 is there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Like that all the numbers are there. So whole numbers set is a subset of integer set. Now we will learn about prime numbers and composite numbers. 
Prime numbers. What are prime numbers? The numbers which are divisible by 1 and itself are known as prime numbers. Here 1 is not a prime number. 1 is not a prime number. I am not going to discuss elaborately about this because you already know what are prime numbers. So the prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13 like that many prime numbers are there. Here in all these prime numbers only one prime number is even that is 2. 2 is the only one even prime number. Other than 2, whatever the prime numbers are there, they are all odd numbers. So what are the prime numbers? The numbers which are divisible by 1 and itself are known as prime numbers. 1 is not a prime number. Composite numbers. What are composite numbers? The numbers which are not prime are known as composite numbers. 4, 6, 8, 9, 10 like that they are all composite numbers. What are rational numbers? Rational numbers are denoted by Q. The numbers of the form P by Q, where Q not equal to 0, here Q is not equal to 0 and here P and Q are integers and P and Q have no common factor. What I am trying to say, what are rational numbers? The numbers of the form P by Q, here Q cannot be equal to 0, here P and Q are integers and P and Q have no common factor. For example, you take 2 by 3. 2 by 3 is a rational number? Yes, 2 by 3 is a rational number because it is in the form of p by q and this q is not equal to 0. There is no common factor for 2 and 3. There is no common factor other than 1. 1 is obviously is a common factor for every number. p and q have no common factor other than 1. You keep that in your mind. Okay, here 2 and 2 by 3 is a rational number because it is in the form of p by q. 2, 3 are integers and there is no common factor for these two numbers. Is 4 by 5 is a rational number? Yes, of course, because it is in the form of p by q and this q is not equal to 0 and 4 and 5 have no common factor, right? 5. Is 5 is a rational number? It is not in the form of p by q, but however, 5 can be written as 5 divided by 1. 5 divided by 1, it is in the form of p by q. So, 5 is also a rational number. What I am trying to say here, you know integers, all integers are rational numbers, all integers are rational numbers, yes, all integers are rational numbers. For example, 0 is an integer, is 0 is a rational number, yes, 0 can be written as 0 divided by 5, 0 divided by 2, 0 divided by 3, like that. All integers are rational numbers. What I am trying to say, integer set is a subset of rational numbers. Integer set is a subset of rational numbers. What we learn about subset now, natural numbers are subset of whole numbers. Whole numbers subset of integers. Integers is a subset of rational numbers. Now we will see about irrational numbers. What are irrational numbers? A number which is not rational is called irrational number. The number which is not rational, which cannot be expressed in the form of p by q, are known as irrational. For example, you see here root 2. Root 2 is irrational number. Root 3 is irrational number. Root 5 is irrational number. Root 7. Like that, you, you already know all these things. Just I am quickly revising what are these rational numbers and irrational numbers. Mainly we are discussing about number system. Number system is mainly divided into two types. One is real numbers, another one is complex numbers. Now we are going to learn about real numbers. Here whatever the numbers we written here, natural numbers, whole numbers, all these numbers are known as real numbers. I said in the beginning itself, whatever the numbers you learn till SSLC, they are all real numbers. You pick any number in between minus infinity to plus infinity on the number line, that is a real number. Is 100 is a real number? Yes, 100 is a real number. Is 1 by 2 is a real number? Yes, 1 by 2 is a real number. 1.34567 is a real number? Yes, it is a real number. Whatever the number you pick in between between minus infinity to plus infinity that is known as real number. Complex numbers. As I said, we have a chapter on complex numbers in first PUC. However, I will quickly recall what are complex numbers. The numbers of the form a plus ib are called complex numbers where a and b are real numbers and i equal to square root of minus 1. What are complex numbers? The numbers of the form a plus ib are called complex number where a comma b are real numbers and i equal to root over minus 1. For example, you see 2 plus 3i is it is a complex number? Yes, it is a complex number because it is in the form of a plus ib. First one, it is in the form of a plus ib and second point a, b are real number. 2, 3 are real numbers. So this is the example of complex number. You see minus 2 plus 3i 
Is it is a complex number? Yes, because it is in the form of a plus ib and a and b are real numbers. What is a here? Minus 2 is a real number. 3 is a real number, right? Now you see 4. Is 4 is a complex number? Yes, because it seems to be like a real number. Actually, it is a real number. 4 is a real number. No doubt in that. My question is, is 4 is a complex number? We, we can write 4 like this, 4 plus i into 0, as we are able to write 4 in the form of a plus ib. So, we say that 4 is a complex number. You try to understand here what I am saying. Every real number is a complex number. All real numbers are complex number, but every complex number is not real. For example, you see 2 plus 3i. 2 plus 3i is a complex number. It is not a real number. I hope you are understanding 1 by 2 1 by 2 is a real number 1 by 2 complex number also here you need to understand one point all real numbers are complex numbers means real number set is a subset of complex numbers real numbers are denoted by r real numbers are denoted by r try to understand this okay so 2i 2i is a complex number if it is in the form of a plus ib then we say it is a complex number 2i 2i can be written as 0 plus 2i it is in the form of a plus ib 0 comma 2 are real numbers so 2i is a complex number actually when we use this complex numbers frequently you observe the square root of minus 4 in real system square root of minus 4 is not well defined but in complex system, it is defined like this. Root over minus 4 can be written as root over minus 1 into 4. That can be written as root over minus 1 into root 4. What is root over minus 1? As we discussed, i is root over minus 1 in the definition. The root over minus 1 is i and root 4 is 2. So, 2i. So, root over minus 4 is what? 2i. Root over minus 4 is 2i. This is in complex system. In real system, what is root over minus 4? In real system, root over minus 4 is not well defined. I hope you understand this class. Right? So, what we learn here? We learn about natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rationals, irrationals, real numbers, complex numbers. Here you need to understand natural number set is a subset of whole numbers. Whole numbers is a subset of integers. Integers is a subset of rational numbers. And all these are subset of real numbers. And real numbers are subset of complex numbers. I hope you understand this class. In next class, we are going to learn about definition of logarithm and few examples. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.